Hey, good morning, everybody. We are going to start uh, the Diablo 3 hardcore run that I've been talking about forever and ever with uh, our strangely colored automaton heroine Gazongas here in front of us. Um, I'm running the game on hard. Uh, you get a little much, a uh, little better XP uh, gains. It's not too much more difficult if you know what you're doing, um, and you get better items which allow you to survive more betterer and stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, that's how we're gonna roll with this. Um, I've done a little pre-leveling, as you can see. Um, you might have caught the stream of that a few days ago, earlier in the week, but um, here we go. We gonna start. Uh, hopefully, it gives us the opening cutscene. Uh, it probably won't. Nope. Okay, in the opening cutscene, um, Deckard Cain, who is an old sage guy, and his niece are in a cathedral, and a meteor falls and separates them. And also, there are demons for some reason. So, oh, good. It. it Kind of set them to my level. So it's at that point that this lady, our demon huntress, happens to be chasing after the fallen star. As apparently it's some sign of the apocalypse. Uh, I have a follower with me, which I shouldn't have yet. I shouldn't have until much further into the game, but whatever. It fell on and the yeah, here we go. There's only one survivor, Leah. You should speak with her. Captain Rumford, more dead are coming. We can't help with this the game is back. honestly a little cliched with the whole fighting an evil army of death bullshit tropes, and there's a, a painfully obvious twist that comes towards the end of the well of the vanilla game. This is the expansion. Um, but it's still fun and it's still really rich with stuff to check out and stuff to read and backstory. And Blizzard always does a really good job filling in their games with backstory. I hear. been a bane on our existence since that cursed fire fell. We have to burn them just to make sure they don't rise from the grave. Hard times call for harder choices. See, that didn't even need to be in there, but it's awesome that it was. As the shepherd watches over his flock. All right, we're going to be running through this rather quickly, uh, the very beginning anyways, uh, just since I've already cleared up to level 15 here. That way we can uh, move on with the story quickly and get to the more challenging stuff. Um, to be perfectly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, to be Perfectly honest, this character is going to die. I mean, the main reason I'm recording this and, and streaming it is because it can happen pretty much at any moment, and I want there to be some sort of record of this goddamn character. If this character makes it all the way to the end of Act 5, which would be awesome, if it makes it all the way to the end of Act 5, I'm going straight to the next highest difficulty... The dead um, straight to adventure and mode, and I will keep streaming that until this character dies. This character will die, and it will be streamed. Thank you. And it's going to be great. Captain Rumford at the gate. He can tell you what to do. All right. Let's go talk to the captain. Let's go talk to the captain. Da 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 da. Here we go. Running up here. B -d 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 -d. Um, we won't get a lot of backstory here in the beginning. Um, up to the Skeleton King, what can which I is the first major the boss in the game. Uh, first I unique boss, courage, I should say. Captain Dalton and the is it the first unique? Those things. Yeah. Only I first unique boss. Anyways, because I've cleared up to that point with this character already. Well, uh, explaining fun. why the character is level 15. Uh, this game seems to be more balanced around the expert difficulty than any of the other difficulties. Um, I played through my first Crusader, my first non-hardcore character, with a or on the expert difficulty 
and it was tuned so perfectly that I hit level 70 um, about two missions into the fifth act, and then I was, um, I had my Paragon level, which are levels you gain after you hit the level cap. Um, a great way to extend the game. I was hitting about level 10 or 20 by the time I had beaten Malthael at the very end of the game. Um, now that's noteworthy because at that difficulty, when you play through, you hit level 70 while you're while you're in the game. So you have access to a complete skill set before the end of the game, and then basically with the leveling up system, the Paragon levels, it teases you all the extra stuff that you can now unlock now that you've hit this level cap and you continue to go on. Um, it's a really awesome way to basically tease that you can do so much more in your game um, and that it doesn't just end at 70. If you played um, if you played the original uh, Diablo 3 um, the setup on that, now granted I played I played on the, the Xbox 360 uh, version of that so it was remixed significantly from the PC version to begin with, no, you know, real money auction house, no other dumb bullshit. Um, but having a game with a level setup that allows you to basically run away, that allows you to get with a certain difficulty, get to the level cap and beyond before you finish your game and then tease even more is a lot better than what they had in the original. Because in the original, you would beat the game and you would basically unlock the next difficulty remix and be able to play through the game again. So it was kind of like Diablo 2, or in Diablo 2 you would... Um, in Diablo 2 you would beat the main game, and then from there you would go on to uh, the Nightmare version, then the Hell version, and so on and so forth. Um, they did the same thing in the original Diablo 3. It worked really well, but it got... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It worked really well, but it ended up kind of getting really repetitive after a while. Um, the story is so carefully structured, and you see the same points and go through some of the same areas over and over just so often that by the time you beat Inferno mode, you're kind of just really done running through it. And granted, the game has some awesomely addictive stuff to check out or to that keeps you coming back for more. Ooh. Okay. Um, the game keeps you coming back for more, but it's still nice to have the adventure mode at the end, which gives you basically random remixed missions and uh, rifts to run through. It's basically um, a cross between like a horde mode and like a submission mode. Um, and that really gives you a lot of uh, incentive to continue playing the game, especially with the fact that they remixed the Paragon levels so that the Paragon levels actually add bonuses to your stats instead of just bonuses to, like, gold and item find, uh, like it had did in the original Diablo 3 on the 360, um, which was a cool bonus, but it wasn't nearly as big of an incentive to continue to play the game as running through adventure mode with your friends and just, you know, being able to check everything out. Oh, hey. Tony's in the, in the, the chat. Hi, Tony. Hi. Yeah, the devil doesn't pay much rent. Um, eventually, I will get the, uh, the chat logs into the videos. I'm still kind of working on that. I'm still new to the whole Twitch thing, so just bear with me, guys. Um, same thing with the damn... Uh, same thing with the uh, webcam. As you know, Xbox One, the only webcam that works with it is the Kinect. And until there are a few more people checking me out, I really refuse to spend $150 for a glorified webcam that doesn't really work too well for anything else. I don't know. I just don't think it's worth the money. And there's, there's no real reason I would get it otherwise. There's no killer app. There's nothing... There's nothing that the damn Kinect has that would really bring someone like me in to use it. Uh, ooh, I got something for him. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's good. 
Um, I have a connect for my Xbox 360. Um, that was a Valentine's Day gift for the wife that quickly turned sour because she ended up never really wanting to use it. And we had, you know, we've had our fun with it with like Dance Central and some of the Kinect sports games and everything, but it just got old quick, like really quick. Um, so yeah, I really don't see a reason right now to pick one of those damn things up. Just doesn't seem financially responsible to spend that much money on a frickin' webcam. <laughs> So, so far so good. A uh, little background on the Demon Hunter. Uh, see, X07 in the chat knows very pretty much everything I'm going to say. The character is designed to do ridiculous amounts of damage in a stream, basically. Like in One Direction, not too much AoE, although they do have several AoE attacks if you decide you want to build that character that way. But they're, re they're really designed to be able to, to wither an enemy quickly and then get out of trouble quickly. Every The majority of the skills they get right away are designed to stun or in some way slow uh, the enemies you're fighting. And then one of the main skills you get very early on is this vault skill, which you just hit Y and you just quickly move through everything and around enemies in order to basically get yourself out of trouble. And there are other classes that have stuff like that. In fact, every class kind of has some type of skill that allows them to get out of trouble quickly. But I think the uh, Demon Hunter's uh, skill set is the best for being able to make a hasty day. retreat, basically. To um, so we're bringing that. That way, in I case I do get trapped in a corner against um, some enemies see. that can basically cause damage fields underneath West me and, and hurt me badly, I can get the hell away from that. Because uh, that seems to be the main thing that kills me in these games, is just getting stuck in a corner and, oh, there's an explosion I can't get away from. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, or like a poison field or something like that. So being able to see that and then quickly get away from it, I think is going to help me get through to level 70 or higher. Kill it! Kill it! Their skill set also looks pretty cool. Um... I have a, a, a level, like a high paragon level, actually that. mid paragon level uh, paladin, or not paladin, shit, crusader, um, as my main uh, non-hardcore, and uh, his skill set's got some cool stuff to it, but there's really not, enough hatred. not too much um, visually impressive stuff to check out, whereas you've got this super cool, you know, rapid fire here. The uh, Crusader's skill trees are, are pretty... Uh, I would say routine or run-of-the-mill or cliched. I mean, they're the, they're the cliched, like, paladin, Templar character. You know, a guy with a sword and a shield. He's got a shield bash. Um, he's got some cooler spells that, like, rain down fire and brimstone or, like, a holy bolt of lightning, stuff like that, uh, which look cool. Um, oh wow, that's, uh, man, I love jumping up difficulty. It makes it so much easier to get good gear. And I mean, like, I'm seeing the immediate effects right away here. Yeah. Oh man, I've kind of forgotten what I'm doing. Tony's probably laughing at me right now. Did you really just... Copy paste the the demon hunter description from like the Blizzard website. Really? Yeah, I'm not doing Torment 3 on a hardcore run. I want this stream to last more than 16 minutes. Thank you. Let's see, it's all cleared out. Sweet. Okay. We're actually getting very good experience for this. Thank you for your help. All right. But could you talk some sense into Leah? She won't give up on the idea of rescuing her uncle. Nor should she. I will help you. You nerd, find Tony. Her. You big nerd. 
I got 2012 experience. They're off by three years. Dur -dur 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 -dur.